Hello everybody, I'm back. I'm making fried corn. I don't know if I did something wrong to this um, video or not, but anyway, I cut the corn from the cob. I'm not even sure if you saw it all or not because I think I might have not even had it on. But I took the corn from the cob. I cut the corn from the cob. Half, half grain, when I cut the corn from the cob, I just cut it halfway. I didn't cut it all the way down to the cob. I took half 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 a grain all the way around the cob. Then I took my spoon and I raked all the milk from the cob, right? And then when I got it in the bowl, really good. I cut it up in a big bowl just like this. And then now I'm frying in it. Okay? I'm frying it in some butter flavor oil, fresh corn from the cob. I may have to redo this because I'm not sure if I uh, had my video going at first. I think that's why I kept going off. Anyway, I cut this corn from the cob and creaming it. And I think I reiterate it one more time because I don't know if if you guys saw me the first time, and I may have to do this recipe again. But it's fresh corn from the cob. I took all my corn, shelled it and sipped it, cut it on each end. I took a knife and I went all the way around the corn, all the way around the corn, right? All the way around the corn. Do not go so deep where you cut the cob. If you cut that cob, you're gonna have a cob in your corn, and that's gonna be kind of husky. You don't want that in your corn. After I went all the way around this cob with a knife, I took my spoon and I went down the cob all the way around and got the extra juice out of it. Some people call it milk, but I got the extra corn juice out of it over my big bowl. After I did each cob like that, I put a, had my corn, my corn in a big bowl. Then I added a little water to it. I put me some butter flavor oil in my pan, my frying pan. Sometimes I use uh, bacon. I fry up some bacon. But tonight, I just wanted my corn fried in butter flavor. I love corn. I made some last week. I ate it all up, so making some more. But the, the, the last recipe is on my Facebook Live page. You have to go over there if you want to see the full video until I do it again. Okay? I put it in my skillet in some butter flavor, Crisco, and a little butter. And I cut up some red bell peppers because I, lo I love red bell peppers in my corn. And now I'm just letting it fry. Cook down until it get done. It doesn't take corn very long to cook, but you don't want to rush it. Always tell people when you're in the kitchen cooking, allow yourself a little time. Try not to uh, be in such a big hurry all the time. Allow yourself some time to enjoy that experience. Now, sometimes we have to rush, I guess, because we'll be in a bit of a hurry. But try to give yourself enough time so you don't have to rush, you know, cooking. Enjoy, enjoy your cooking experience. That's my, uh, my ginger ale. Okay, while this is frying, I'm going to show you guys what I cooked earlier. I made some, uh... Salmon croquettes with the fresh salmon and the uh, pink salmon that can't mix together. I made some beautiful salmon croquettes. Okay? It should be on my page. Go over to my YouTube channel, Cooking with Church Girl Cummings, and see how I put that uh, salmon croquettes together. Now I'm doing corn. Only thing that I didn't do tonight on the video, on this video, I did it live, was my fettuccine. I'll show it to you while my corn is cooking. It's already cooked, already done. I made shrimp fettuccine with broccoli spears, with broccoli spears, and um, broccoli spears, large shrimp, and red bell pepper. And I made my own Fredo sauce. Okay, I just want to show it to you since my corn is cooking. There's my um, shrimp fettuccine 
with, with jumbo shrimp, red bell peppers, and a little broccoli spears. Okay, that's already ready. I also made some, um, I also made some salmon croquettes. They're in my, my other video, but I can't show them to you because they're in the oven. Let me just take this out of the way. Cause I'm gonna, when it cool off real good, I'm gonna put it, put it up. I'll have it tomorrow for lunch. At least part of it. I'll be able to eat off of it a couple times. This corn is really frying up really good. Really, really good from the cob. I'm gonna do that recipe again because I think, uh, I don't think I had my video going. I was trying to figure out what was happening. Anyway, just to show you in this video again, there's my salmon croquettes. They already fried up really nicely. And I really enjoyed one. It was so, so good, so, so good. I made it with fresh salmon croquettes. Go over on my YouTube page, channel, Cooking with Church Girl Cummings, and check out the recipe, okay? And try that recipe. I think you'll really enjoy it. Made with fresh uh, salmon and uh, regular salmon that come in the can. I've made it both ways. I've made fresh salmon by itself. I've made salmon croquettes, pink salmon, you know, that we grew up on. My mother used uh, Jack Mackle back in the day and made her patties, salmon croquettes. I use pink salmon. Because um, back in the day, pink salmon was a little expensive. And we had a large family, so my mom used Jack Mackel. And they was delicious. And we, my mom used to serve it to us with rice and string beans. That's what I remember. And biscuits. Sometimes we would have rice and biscuits, rice and, uh, I mean, uh, salmon croquette and biscuits for breakfast. Back in the day growing up in Mississippi, my mom would sometimes give us uh, salmon croquettes, hot homemade biscuits, and some syrup. As a kid, that was some good, good eating. As a child growing up, that was some good eating. Okay, my corn is really frying up really, really good. It's frying up really, really good. And you can tell the difference too, when you eat fresh corn, as opposed to frozen corn or corn from the uh, freezer that come from the store. And you get this corn right here, fresh from the, from the uh, market, from the field, you know, from the vegetable market, or even in the store when they're in season. And you shelf that corn and silk it and cut it off the cob and you fry it down. Ooh, Lord, it even smell different. It's just that fresh. Okay, I'm letting this cook down. It's almost done. It doesn't take really, really a whole, whole long time for it to fry down. Now, some people, some people add, um, some people add what you call flour to their corn. I don't put flour in my corn. It's okay. Some people use it as a thickener. If I want to add some thickening to my corn, which I don't think I'm going to need, I'll take a little cornstarch and a little water, and I may show you that just for the, just so you'll know how I do it. And I add a little cornstarch and water to my corn, and that'll thicken it right up if I want my corn to be a little bit, you know, a little thickening to it. I don't like a lot of flour in it because it make it look pasty. And I don't want to be eating flour corn. You know, you can taste all that flour. But if you just have to thicken it up with flour, just get a little bit of flour, maybe a teaspoon, Add it to a little water. Don't just sprinkle the flour over the corn. Don't do it that way. Add it with a little water, just a little water, make a paste, and then put it in that way, okay? If you're just gonna use the flour, make a little paste. Don't just sprinkle the flour over your corn loose. Okay, cause you end up with some lumps. You fool around and end up with lumps in your corn. Okay, what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna show you what I mean by I don't really necessarily have to thicken this up because my corn is not watery. It's not watery. But what I'm gonna do, just to show you what I mean, if you wanna thicken it up a little bit, I'll probably add just a tiny bit of water to it. 
and show you what I mean by using cornstarch as a thickener. Cornstarch is a thickening agent anyway. That's what cornstarch really is. Instead of using flour, you can use a little cornstarch. Get yourself a little bowl or a little measuring cup and get yourself a spoon. I'm not gonna get no measuring spoon, I'm just gonna use a teaspoon straight from, the, from my, uh, my thing there. I have a habit of, of rinsing everything, so. Get yourself a teaspoon, or use a measuring spoon, it don't matter, whichever one you're comfortable with. And I'm just doing it to show you. In the meantime, I add a little water because it's really not, I really don't need to do this technique. But I want to show you something. How good uh, cornstarch thickens up. In the meantime, I'm going to add a little water. I don't have to do that, but I'm doing that because I want to show you how, uh, if you need to thicken your corn up. If your, if your corn is too loose, which mine wasn't. Mine wasn't too loose, but I just want to show you a technique. So I added a little more water to it so I can show you. This is what I'm going to do, you guys. Show you how I, I uh, thicken my corn up, if I need to thicken it up. I really don't need to thicken it up, but I add a little water to it. So I can show you. I take my cornstarch instead of flour. Remember, cornstarch is a thickening agent. It's very good for gravies and... Let me move this camera a little bit. It's very good for gravies and... And a thickening, so... I wanna, if you want to thicken your corn up, get you some cornstarch. I don't need too much. Put it in a, in a container, a little bowl or something, a little measuring cup. Turn this down. It's really cooking up really good. Frying up really, really good. I may add a little bit of more butter to it just to give it that butter flavor. But that butter, Crisco butter, uh, is really give it a good, good flavor. The Crisco um, butter flavor, Crisco, is what I'm using. I usually put a little piece of butter in there. Anyway, I take this uh, cornstarch and I add a little water. I use boiled water because I have hard water. I don't cook with my tap water because I don't like to cook with it. Put your little water, like so, not much. Depending on how much uh, starch you use. You get your starch, or either your flour, do this the same way. Don't just take your flour and sprinkle it over in there loose. Always make a slurry, what they call a slurry, okay? When you make your slurry, you wanna stir it up really, really good. Make sure it dissolved. Make sure that starch is dissolved really good. Or your flour, whichever one you're using. Once you stir it up really good, you want to take your slurry and you want to add that to your corn, like so. I don't think I don't I don't think I need all of this. I don't want my corn too 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 uh too thick. Add it to your corn or whatever it is you're cooking that you want to thicken it up. If it's gravy or soups or even your beans and peas if you want a little little uh your juice not to be so loose make your little slurry with either cornstarch or flour just make sure you make a slurry first do not put it in there dry and when you add it to your corn or whatever it is you're trying to thicken it up you'll notice it'll begin to thicken it right up it'll begin to thicken it right up Really, really good. Okay, turn it up a little bit. I have a little bit left, but I really don't need to use it all because, like I said, I don't want my uh, corn to be too, 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 uh, too, uh, too, too stiff. Okay, that's going to thicken that up just fine because that's what cornstarch does. It's a thickening agent. I'm not going to use the rest of that. It ain't got a little bit, no way, but I'm not going to use it. So, go, continue to let your corn cook until it's all the way done. And in about 10 minutes, I'm going to turn this off and say night-night. Be 
because it'll be finished. Okay. Now what I'm going to do, I'm going to taste my corn. Remember I told you, don't be afraid to taste your food because if you taste your food, you'll know what you need to put in it if anything is lacking. You'll know if you have too much of something and you need to kind of do something to thin it out a little bit. If you have it too salty or what have you. But taste your food. Don't be afraid to taste your food. That way you'll know exactly what you have in it. And you'll know exactly if you need to uh, add anything. I'm going to go ahead and taste this. Turn it up a little bit. I just don't want to cook too fast. I don't like my corn to cook too fast. I do want to fry, but I don't want to cook too fast. I wish you guys could see it up close. I'm going to let you see it close in a minute. But it's, it's turning out to be really, really good. I'm going to go ahead and give it a little taste. See if I need to add anything to it. Give it a little bit of taste. Very, very good. I'm going to add a little butter and a pinch of salt. And that's it. Ooh, it got a good fresh taste to it. Very good fresh taste. Just like I told you it would. That's because that butter flavor and that corn is fresh from the cob. I'm going to end up doing another video because uh, you all didn't see me cut it from the cob. I don't think I had my camera on. Once I did all that demonstration, I don't even think I had the camera on. Anyway, put that in the bowl there. I'm gonna add a little bit of butter, a little, little salt. I'm not gonna add any pepper this time. I don't want any pepper. I got to buy me some white pepper. I always forget to buy me some white pepper. Now, what I, I might put in here just a sprinkle of a little bit of uh, Tony's for my salt and a little bit of pepper flake, red pepper flake, just to give it a kick. I might and I might not. But when I'm eating corn, fresh corn from the uh, field like that, what we used to call field corn. Back south, we used to call corn on the cob field corn. <laughs> Because it comes straight from the farmer's field to the table. What I'm going to do, turn this water off. Turn this water off. Okay. I'm going to go ahead and put a little butter in it. I love corn with a good buttery, buttery, uh, Burberry flavor. I might just go ahead and put all of this little piece. That ain't that much, so maybe I'll put that on in there. I ain't but a little bit of piece. Okay. Now, turn this water off. Always keep me some hot dish water at all times in the kitchen. And keep those hands impeccable clean. Remember I told you, cleanliness is next to godliness. Keep those hands incredibly clean. And don't be afraid to cook with your hands. You don't have to use always use gloves unless you got on some long fingernails and rhinestones and stuff on your nails that you may be afraid to come up in your food. Or if you have any kind of cut or anything on your hand, then by all means, you must use gloves. Any kind of scratch or scrape on your hand or in between your fingers, Always put on gloves, okay? But as long as you don't have no scrapes and bruises and scratches. Well, bruises, okay, but I meant cuts. Anything that's open. You don't have to use gloves, okay? I put some butter in it. Now what I'm going to do, I'm going to add a pinch of salt. Because when I tasted it, I love the flavor. I love the buttery flavor. I love the corn, the fresh corn taste. That's the main thing. I don't like, I don't want much salt at all. Just a, just a little bit. I think I'm going to put my 
my all time, my all time uh, pink hemoglobin salt. This is a very good salt. No MSG, it's all natural. I think I told you, came from Indonesia. I think it's also come from the mountains out of India. And it's another foreign country. I think it's Australia, I believe, if I'm not mistaken. And you can find it now in most of the stores, supermarkets carry it. I happen to have it in this. And then I have another one over there. And I'll show you that. You can get it fine too, but you don't necessarily have to buy it in this uh, kind of container. But this is a little coarse, so you can buy it a little coarse. Put it in your food. It's very good salt. If you haven't tried this particular salt, please give it a try. I'm sending some to one of my good friends that was on my watch me cook the other day. I gave away a nice size jar and I'll be giving away some more different seasoning that I want you all to try that I think is healthy for you. Not gonna hurt you. I'll be giving away some more spices. I already given this away, a larger one to another friend of mine the other day, sweet sister that was watching me cook so I put in a little salt, and I'm just going to let it finish cooking for maybe five more minutes. I'm going to turn it off because it's really, really is cooking good and it's just about ready. Just about ready. In the meantime, I want to show you this, uh, my other package I was talking about. I'm always looking for ways to try to uh, cook healthy. I'd like to show you a little seasoning. The Himalayan salt I just showed you. You can also get it in fine salt. You don't have to get it coarse, but you can get it real, real fine. And you just use it in all your foods, your meats, your vegetables. Pretty much anything you put salt in, you can use this particular salt. And I really think you will really like it. And it's like I said, it's more better for you than that Martin salt with all that MSG in it. With high blood pressure, you have to be really careful with your salts, okay? But this salt right here is a very good salt to use, especially for uh, people with high blood pressure. You still want to watch it, but this is much, much better. Much, much better than, than um, regular salt. This is um, very, very good salt. Premium gourmet quality. I like good seasonings. So if you find this salt... In it, mostly any supermarket. Okay? That's the same one I just showed you. That's the same salt I just showed you. The other one just coarse, a little bit coarser, so I had to, uh, I bought it in another container. You can buy it real, real fine. And another decent salt that you can use is uh, sea salt. I also use sea salt, it's fine sea salt. Sea salt is, is also a pretty good salt. It's made by Martins, but it's still better than the iodine. It, all the salt is better than that Martin iodine with the MSG. To me, that's the worst one to use. I use it, but I only use it to wash my greens in. <laughs> oh, Lord. Okay, my corn is all ready. I'm about ready to turn it off. I want you guys to see how that uh, cornstarch brought it right together. Gave it a little bit of thickening, but not over, not overly thick. Just right, okay? So with that being said, I'm gonna get off of here and tell you guys to chime on over there. Go on over to Cooking with the Church Girl. And right now I don't have a whole lot of recipes because I'm just getting started. But I do have some things on there that I think you will enjoy looking at. So uh, I will be doing a whole lot more recipes. All kinds of recipes. Cakes and cookies and meats and soups. And any requests that I may get to cook. I have a couple of requests already. So I'm working on getting those together so I can... So I can get those cooked, okay? And I must 
I must get those tea cakes done because people are waiting on, they're waiting on my tea cakes, you guys. So I got to get busy with the, with those tea cakes. This is my little extra uh, bell pepper. I don't believe in throwing away good food. Put my bad pepper away. Get ready to put my onion away. Cause I'm gonna have to get off my feet. Cause I'm starting to feel a little bit of pain. And I don't want the pain to come down too hard on me before I stop. Okay? So I'm gonna show you my corn. And then I'm gonna say night night. This is just red red, red uh onions. Then I'm gonna put in that uh Putting off the outside here, so I, so I can put it in the fridge. My onion, red onion. Always, you know, keep your keep your. Uh, don't throw. I see people throwing away a whole lot of. I don't know why they be doing that. I guess because they're on YouTube. I don't know, but I tell you what, I'm not throwing out my my uh, onions and bell peppers and. They have a lot of leftover spices, and I see a lot of people that throwing it away. I said, oh well. Everybody different. But the church girl is not throwing away her. Her good onions and bell peppers. You can save it and use it for another time. It ain't got to be used just for one dish. You know, take it, keep you some sandwich paper or some saran wrap or some foil or some freezer, a little freezer or a bag, and put it back in your, in your uh, refrigerator, in your vegetable bin, wherever you keep it at. And it'll stay fresh and ready for the next time. I guess I may be very thrifty. I don't believe in throwing away good, good spices and stuff. If it's not enough, you know, then if it's not worth keeping, of course I'll throw that away. Okay, my corn is all ready. It's finished. That didn't take too long at all. I'm gonna to have to do another video and show you exactly how I took it off the cob because I think I didn't have the video on when I was doing that technique. This is still new to me and I'm learning how to work with this YouTube. I know how to cook, but I'm talking about the YouTube thing. I done got old now, so I'm gonna to have to get a little help to help me get my YouTube, everything set up just right. Once I get it set up just right, Oh, wow. I'm going to have some really, 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 really good recipes to share. Okay. I'm going to show you all the finished product of the corn. I think what I'll do is serve it up and show you all the finished product. And then the church girl is going to say good night to you. Corn is all finished. It smells so good. So good. I really could have me a piece of that salmon croquet and some of this corn. But I love corn so much, I'm just gonna eat just a bowl of corn tonight. And I'm not gonna I'm gonna eat my, eat my uh, shrimp fettuccine tomorrow. At least some of it. In the meantime, I'm gonna go ahead and show you guys this if I can bring it up a little closer. There's the finished product of my Fried corn, fresh fried corn with, with little red bell peppers. And I think it came out very, very good. Very, very good. Very, very good. Smells so good too. Ooh, smell like my mama's kitchen. Okay. Gonna serve me up a bowl, and I'm gonna be eating this tonight. Let it cool down a little bit so I don't burn my mouth off. And call it a night night for me. And I'm gonna ask you guys to continue to keep me in prayer because I'm still going through. It's fibromyalgia and it's migraine sometime and arthritis. It's kind of rough on the old girl sometime. The church girl be going through sometime, y'all. But I'm going to keep on going. 
But God is good. I have no complaints. I just learned to pray and try to deal with the pain, the discomfort, you know, best I can. But cooking, you know, being in the kitchen, it kind of forces me to move and forces me to do things instead of just laying on the bed saying, woe is me. So um, if I have me on YouTube cooking channel, that really helped motivate me to, um, you know, to keep moving. Okay, there you have it. Cooking with church girl, fresh corn from the cob. I cut it off the cob and I creamed it. And I have red bell peppers because I love red bell peppers. And I cooked it in uh, butter flavor Crisco. And I did add a little more butter because I just love butter in my corn. And there you have it. So going over there to Cooking with Church Girl comments and subscribe, like, and share. And I really appreciate it very, very much. As I said, I'm just getting started. But there will be many, many, many more great recipes coming your way. From the Church Girl with a praise on my lips. With that being said, have a good night. Be blessed now. Bye.